Hello, I'm Tony Seddon, Company Secretary of FASET, which is Forest Safety Equipment Training, and that's the UK representative body for the safety netting industry. A brief uh, history of FASET. FASET was founded back in 2001, and it was formed to bring a focus on standards and training within the safety netting industry. It was originally formed by the manufacturers, installers, trainers, the CITB, and it was supported by the HSE. The idea was to produce a standard syllabus on training and technical advice and guidance on the use of safety nets within the UK. FACET at the time produced a card scheme which evidenced the competence of the people putting the net up and it now has been moved over to form part of the CSCS scheme. The organisation has around 40 members and this is made up of companies who are installing, manufacturing or, or training and also associate members uh, such as major contractors and the HSE. Today's talk talks about um, installation and maintenance and test of, of the safety nets and the first part of that we term the three C's. We will talk about pre and post use inspections, UV testing, repairs, record keeping, storage and in use records. So the three pillars of the safety netting system are compliant product, compliant rigging and comprehensive maintenance. And like a building, you need all those pillars for it to be effective. There are five parts to a safety net. The first part being the mesh itself. And that mesh can be knotted or knotless and can be in the form of a diamond or a square. The second part is the border rope which goes around the, the, the perimeter of the safety net and is formed from 30 kN rope. The third part is the identification label and that will detail a number of things. One of which is the unique serial number of that net. And the fifth part is the UV test mesh that is made and woven within the net. So if we move on to maintenance, comprehensive maintenance starts with pre-use inspection and as the name suggests this takes place before every use. And that is there to ensure that the net is compliant and that it is in good order and fit to be used. Post-use inspection should be carried out away from site preferably and should be carried out on a light coloured floor. And the net must be inspected on both sides to check for damage and wear and tear. It's there to ensure that the net is, is, is in good order and is fit for further use. It's also to identify any, any repairs that are required. UV testing takes place because the textiles that the net is made from uh, degrade with ultraviolet light. Typically the net is made from polypropylene. When the net is manufactured, UV inhibitors are used within that process, however it's not infallible. One sacrificial test mesh should be removed from the net and it should be tested and that test should be carried out every 12 months. On the screen is an example of a typical test mesh being tested and that test mesh is broken to prove the strength of the net. Once the test has taken place and the test has been carried out and the test has been passed, the evidence of that is in the form of a certificate proving that the net is fit for further use for another 12 months and it is also evidenced through the use of a tag. And that tag should be attached to the net. There's a, an example on the screen of a typical test, test tag. It's very important to remember that with no UV test mesh and no evidence of that test means that the net is not, conform, not compliant. Repairs to safety nets come into two categories, temporary and permanent. 
and those repairs should be carried out by an authorised and competent person. It should be made from an approved material and twine and that material should be approved by a safety net manufacturer. And there's an example of a typical repair on the screen now. Cable ties can be used within a repair but they must not be used in a structural manner. The repair itself should be carried out using the twine and the twine is the structural uh, part to the repair. The, the cable ties are only there to keep the, the repair tidy. Now there are a number of myths about the, the repairs to nets and one of which being the number of repairs that are permitted in any, in any net. There are no limits to the number of repairs that are carried out on a safety net. However, no two repairs may overlap. Repairs can form patch repairs or single strand repairs, repairs to the selvage of the net, which is the perimeter of the net, or the border rope. Any net that was manufactured post the 1st of January 2008 must carry a repair tag on any repair that it has on it. The repairs, the repair tags will detail the company that repaired the net, the individual and it will also give the date that that repair took place. There will be records to back, back up that information that should be maintained by the company who has the net. Now repairs can be carried out to knotted nets and those repairs must still be carried out by a competent and authorised person. And there's an example of a knotted repair on the screen now. If we turn to temporary repairs, nets can be damaged when they're being taken to site or when they're being erected. And that a temporary repair can take place to a single strand, a single broken strand, and there can be up to two temporary repairs in any one net. Those repairs can be carried out over three strands, a maximum of three strands. They can be carried out by the rigger on site and once that net has been finished with and is taken down, those temporary repairs must be made permanent in the approved manner. Records should be kept of all inspections of nets. Records should be maintained of handover and use. And we've got an example of a typical handover certificate on the, on the screen now. Uh, records should be maintained of all the UV tests that are carried out and as I've said before that should take, take the form of a label or tag on the net and a, a paper or computerised record that's maintained at the office. Storage of nets is quite critical. Nets must be stored in a dry location. It should be kept away from rodents for obvious reasons and it should be kept out of direct sunlight as we've heard UV degrades the uh, net itself. We have seen nets stored within a greenhouse that is not acceptable. Nets should be segregated from each other. Um, you should maintain segregation between nets that are fit for use, nets that are awaiting repair and nets that are uh, end of life and uh, have no further use. So that concludes the presentation and thank you for watching. If you require any further information please visit our website.